very few patients actually know the, the labels of branded lenses. Um, one of the things in our original conversation that, that really um, I, I sympathized with is this whole idea of, you know, having the non-big branded, um, I guess, eyewear <laughs> lens companies um, being sold like maybe for progressives or anything like that. And this whole um, idea with private label. What is this odd reaction that you're running into when, when you're talking with offices about private label? Yeah, so that's an interesting one. I've I've had to refine my language over the years with the private label thing with lenses because I really these days with lens technology, the way you make a lens digitally with freeform technology, it's it's actually software that's making the lens. So right. It's like if you have a good software designer behind it, it's a good lens. If it's made properly by the lab, of course, and fit properly by the optician. Right. <laughs> but people have this perception, especially in larger practices, I find, or practices that have been working with brand names for a very long time, that somehow private label equals less quality. And right. it doesn't necessarily. Sometimes brand right. name equals less quality. It just right. happens to be a brand behind it. Or sometimes brand name means you know, you're paying for a $25 million marketing budget and the hype that goes with that rather than <laughs> all at the end of the day. So right. I, I usually liken it to baked beans. That's how I think of lenses. Um, and so, you know, I could go to the grocery store and I could get the grocery store's brand of baked beans or I could get some, you know, Bushes or some popular brand of baked beans. I don't know anything about Bushes baked beans. So they <laughs> can't mess me after this, but... <laughs> Let's say theoretically that it's the same beans going into a different can with a different label. Maybe okay. it is, maybe it isn't. I have no idea. But <laughs> at the end of the day, I've never really tasted a difference between one baked bean and another. Um, but one's private label. It's less expensive on the shelf. And people have gotten into this mindset where higher priced equals better, lesser price or lower price mm. equals worse. Yes. Is that the case? It, it's not necessarily these days. That's just kind of I think a remnant of an old school pricing model that's quickly becoming outdated. And looking at the the holistic benefits to a patient, uh, the saying that what's best for the patient is best for the practice, right? That, you know, if there's something that the patient is going to be equally as happy with, and, you know, one of the biggest problems that you have is patients going, yeah, it's a little too expensive and price shopping you, like that's what, that's a huge benefit for the patient to be able to offer them a private label lens and the patient doesn't know honestly the patient very few patients actually know the the labels of branded lenses very yeah. few even do they're just there because they're seeking our expertise right and when you go into a heart doctor you know and you have a heart transplant a heart doctor doesn't go this heart option this heart option right. this heart option right? right they're go they're going hey this is what's going to be best for you and you go okay doc and you get your heart transplant or whatever it is a heart valve or whatever it is right so it's really interesting how, you know, the kind of commoditized thing of lenses a lot of times is our own mental stop, you know, mm -hmm. between us as the optical team and being able to just deliver the recommendation. How many people go in with, uh, you know, a pre preferred stint option? Uh, you know, I prefer this <laughs> brand. This is what my, you know, all my family members who, you know, eat too much trans fats have used over the years. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, people don't do that. And I think. In my experience, it's very rare that you get a patient who actually comes in specifying a name brand when the practice didn't set them up to want that name brand already. Right, right. So if there is, it's because it was always it was already prefaced with that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. So now in some cases, you get people coming in who've seen commercials or heard radio ads and they hear a brand name, so they think it must be the thing they want. Or it is a brand name that they've been wearing for years and they just know it because the office talked to them about it. I mean, you know, you can't, you know, we don't have to hide the name brand from patients, but I think there's right. a lot less benefit in the long run to practices, to private practices, to push brand name, or even if they're using a private label to use name because the practice needs to be the expert, not the right. lens. And right. The lens needs to achieve the needs of the patient, but the practice needs to be the expert, not you know, what if all of a sudden that practice can't get the name brand they've been pumping out for 20 years for some reason, or if that brand, right. which I've seen before with major manufacturers who I cannot name here, um, <laughs> multiple major <laughs> manufacturers where 
they go through a one, two, three month period or sometimes shorter, sometimes longer where there's something funky going on and there's a lot of problems. And right. if you're tied into a brand rather than tying in, tied into you being the expert, uh, it makes it harder to pivot when you need to for the sake of your patients and for your business. Right.